Because we're talking with Brian Moylan, the housewives, the real story behind the real housewives. And he's put together the a book. really great book that is a must have for any fan of real drama and fake drama. And the housewives is just a, a delicious uh, TV treasure of a book, Brian. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. It's so, oh, love so it. much. Okay. Forgive us. We had to play that song as an introduction for you. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited you played it for me. Oh, good. We are so excited. We love. We have a Lori and Julia book club, and you are our latest book. And your book, Brian Moylan, is with us. The Housewives: The Real Story Behind the Real Housewives, and. Uh, Julie and I have been faithful fans of your recaps of The Real Housewives going back to Gawker. So we're just thrilled that we tracked you down on Twitter. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to talk about Housewives anytime I can. Okay, so um, you've been writing, and, and I love your recaps on The Real Housewives. You're dishy, you're snarky, you give us your honest opinion, but how did... Because this book is great. I mean, you got people to talk on the record, off the record, housewives, producers, showrunners. I mean, you did your homework to put this book together. Was there any aha moment for you? I'm wanting to do this. Um, I the the reason I wanted to do it is I read a book called uh, Bachelor Nation, which yes. is about the behind the scenes of the Bachelor franchise, which I wasn't a fan, I'm not a fan of, but I read the book and loved it. And I was like, why didn't anyone do this for Housewives? And so I decided to kind of do that and took like about two years of research and interviewing people and tracking people down and looking at every article ever written about the Housewives and every podcast they've been on and every article on bravotv.com and, you know, found all the good juice that's in the book for you guys. It's good. What is the what is the number one thing that people ask you about what you found out about the real story behind the Real Housewives? What is the number one thing that people want to know, or are there too many? Usually, they want to know how much the ladies get paid, mm -hmm. and usually, they want to know like, is it real? Like, is it scripted? How real is it? Um, and you know, we talk about both of those things in the book. Well, let's start with how much they get paid. Um, so. If, if it's a housewife coming out of obscurity, like not someone like Denise Richards, who, you know, has a name. Sure. But they usually make 60000 their first season, 120000 their second season, and then between three and 500000 each season going forward. Um, with the exception of some of the stars that have been around longer, like Candy Burris makes about $2 million a season. Nene Leakes was making about the same before she left. Bethany Franco was making about a million. And the kind of tentpole housewives like a Teresa Giudice or Ramona Singer, they're probably making about a million dollars a season. But oh. they now get paid per episode. So um, New Jersey has a shorter season and Dallas has a shorter season. So they might not make as much per episode as the other women. Got it. Yeah, that's kind of, that's interesting. And I really, you know, enjoyed the story of, which you you tell and really people who uh, if you're a fan of bravo and you like housewives this this you've got to read it's this it's such book. a great book but you know i was fascinated with you know the whole story you tell about how bravo even came up with the real housewives starting with you know the orange county whatever it was called the in coda whatever it was yeah. originally that's a really interesting story yeah, and it was this, it, you know, everyone thinks it was Andy Cohen, and he really had nothing to do with it. It was this guy named Scott Dunlop, and he lived in um, Coto de Casa in Orange County, and he wanted to make a show he called Behind the Gates. And it was less of Real Housewives and more like Curb Your Enthusiasm, where it was going to be real people, but playing out scenes about being in this wealthy community. And from there, it ended up at Bravo, and Bravo changed it into you know, the real housewives that we know and love today. Yeah. And, and also, you know, the whole, you tied in, cause I remember Julie and I, we've been on the air, Brian, since 2002, the summer of 2002. So we've seen all these shows come, 
you know, to life because we were on the air and we're like, what is this? Oh, it's something new to talk about. But we always wondered with the housewives calling themselves the real housewives at the same time as desperate housewives. And so you do yeah. link up that story in, in your book, um, The Housewives. Yeah, to- and that's totally how they got the name. And, you know, there was a lot of that at the time where even um, Lug- uh, the OC uh, was a big show too. And you had like, Laguna Beach and the sure. Hills and like all that, like trying to play off of these popular scripted shows. How many, Brian, how many of the real housewives have been fired versus quit? Are they mostly fired? I say with a handful of exceptions, uh, they are almost all fired. And some of them will swear up and down that they left of their own accord, but I have more often than not heard people say otherwise. And I think with some housewives who have been on longer, Bravo says, okay, we'll give you the chance to announce this and you can say whatever you want, but you're not coming back. Like Dorinda? Um, uh, I I would venture to guess that Dorinda was fired, even yep. though she said she left of her own accord. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I talked to Kristen Takeman for the book who was on Real Housewives in New York, and she still insists that she left of her own accord, but no I heard way. from somebody who was working on the show at the time that that might not have necessarily been the case. But I think when Bethany left both times, that was her own doing. I right. think when Nene left the first time, I think when Lisa Vanderpump left, those are probably the only ones I can think of where people left the show because most of them don't want the gravy train to end. Like this is where they're making their money. They like the platform. They like the fame. They like being a part of this thing. And you know, you're not going to take that away from people willingly. Okay. So Brian, I know that you were like, were you the co-author or the ghostwriter of pretty mess with Erica Jane? Yes. Her book was. So are you still friends? Yeah. Are you guys in contact? Because I'm like, this is unbelievable what we're seeing on Beverly Hills. Yeah. We still chat a bit and, you know, we follow each other on social media and stuff, but I live in London. She lives in LA. Mm -hmm. So we don't see each other a lot, but, um, yeah, I talked to her a couple weeks before the season started and, you know, I think she's really going through it and she really didn't know what was going on. And I think she's struggling like we see on the show. And I think that she knows that it's not going to be over anytime soon. I mean, there's a lot of lawyering left to do. And so I think she's prepared for a uh, long uh, road ahead. Yeah, well, the prosecuting attorneys are taking notes every Wednesday night, every time she's oh, on. Yeah, for sure. Well, and of all the seasons previously, right. it's like, you know, everything you say and do on the show is basically on the record. So, you know, they, I'm sure they could show that footage in court. Yeah. And, and that's, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Brian Molin. His book is The Housewives, the real story behind the real housewives. And he's been a housewife. What are you yourself? um, You're the president and founding member of the completely fictitious Real Housewives Institute. I just love your title. Thank you. Thank you. It is one I bestowed upon myself. I (laughs) absolutely love it. But you have, um, you know, your book is is separated, obviously, into chapters like most books are. But some of the chapters are (laughs) hysterical. You know, the one where the housewives um, fought the law and the law won. How many of these how many, I mean, so many housewives have done such naughty things. Yeah. And a lot of it is before the show, right? but it just shows you like the type of person who's good to be on the housewives is the type of person who kind of walks that thin line between, you know, danger and safety. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm just amazed by the people like Jen Shaw or oh. Teresa Giudice who oh. go on the show knowing that they're committing these crimes. And, you know, and the, the many producers told me, we warn all the women, if you have skeletons in your closet, they're coming out. If you have problems in your marriage, they're coming out. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's going to know everything. And so they're warned before they get into it. But I think some people just think, Oh, they're, they'll never catch me. They'll never know about me. Their egos are the Jan Shaw thing. I mean, Salt Lake was such a blast this past year, but when all that came out, I mean, she is, she's been upgraded to a worse person than she already was. Yeah. <laughs> that just happened and, this week. Yeah. So that's going to be, um, 
something crazy. <laughs> and I can't wait to watch it. I, just, no, um, I hope they let her be on next year. And, you know, one of the things that, that's very fascinating in your book is talking, you write about, you know, basically how much, you know, the the notes that are taken, how they script, how much footage and how much time is put into an hour episode is it was incredible to me. And also the fact that really the producers, they might push people like tell me more about this but all this drama is manufactured by these these women themselves yeah no absolutely and i think that the producers are obviously like putting them in positions where they have to interact with each yeah. other and you know and they're kind of coaching them to get the pr best performance but yeah it you know the producers i talked to said if anyone's driving the story or making up storylines it's, it's the women themselves and yeah i just find that you know I, it, but i think well, these women are professionals. They know what makes good television. I think the calls are coming from inside the house a little bit. Like yeah. they know what the producers want and they're going to give it to them. So, and and, um, and thank, thank God for, for them doing it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And thank goodness that I, we only learned this term, like maybe a couple years ago or maybe only a year ago about the Bravo wink. Will you, yeah. will you just tell people what that is? So the Bravo wink is, is Bravo telling the viewers, like, we know we're in on the joke. Like, we get that this, you know, we take it seriously, but we know it's not serious. So it's like, you know, a, you see it all the time, like a woman on the housewives will say, oh, I never said that. And then they'll show a flashback of her and it'll be like 30 minutes earlier and they'll show her saying exactly that. So yeah. it's kind of saying like, guys, we know this is crazy. We know that these women are over the top but we love them just as much as you do, even though we like get it. So it's kind of acknowledging the irony of the whole situation right. and being like, we don't take this all that seriously. Yeah. I also, um, you, Brian, do you have to go or you do have a, I know it's like, is it, what is it? 10 o'clock in London? It's close to that, but I have a few more minutes for you ladies. You do? Okay, we have to take a quick commercial break and uh, we'll come right back because we, we have to ask you about the bitch edit. <laughs> Everything you know about the bitch edit. Um, we're talking with Brian Moylan. The book is The Housewives, the real story behind The Real Housewives. It's fabulous. Um, we're guys. talking with Brian Moylan, The Housewives, the real story behind The Real Housewives. And he's put together the a book. really great book that is a must have for any fan of real drama and fake drama. And The Housewives is just a, a delicious uh, TV treasure of a book, Brian. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Oh, so, we love so it. much. Okay, so let's talk about something called the bitch edit, the villain edit, where maybe we've heard housewives produce, uh, you know, accuse Andy or producers of giving them a bad edit to make them look bad, make them look like a biatch. What do you know about yes, that? And all of the editors I talk to say that it doesn't really exist. And you know, obviously they're shaping things in certain ways and they can do add sound effects and, you know, different reaction shots. Right. And there are tricks of the trade that they use, but they can't put words into the women's mouths necessarily. Actually, they can, but they say they don't. Okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, and they say that, you know, they need to follow the, the story of the season. If the story of the season is, you know, everyone's mad at Ramona Singer, then they need to show Ramona Singer acting like a jerk so that people understand why they're mad at her. And so, you know, it all comes from the women's own behavior. Yeah. How many, like, I mean, are there a lot of people that go through editors, producers, whatever they're called for doing the show? Be, I mean, is it like a churn and burn? Is it a hard place to, to be an editor or to work on? Production? Yeah. So, um, so there are actually several different production companies make all the, Real Housewives. And so if things are different for each production company, so Got some, uh, an, a story editor who's the person who like goes through the, the rough footage and a, um, and an editor who kind of does the fine tuning, they'll work on one episode together. And then another production company, they do scenes. So you'll just work on mm. certain scenes across all different episodes, but it takes them about six months to put the episodes together for, cause they, as soon as they, film they start production and then they don't air for another like six months and so it's a much more grueling process but apparently bravo is pretty good to work for because there's always work and yeah. they pay pretty well 
and the production companies treat you pretty nice. So, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of reward too. Yeah. And, and is it true that is Andy Cohen really not have that much say? I know he's still like EVP, but is he more just watch what happens live and doing his radio thing? A hundred percent. And, 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 you know, he does have, he does have a voice in the room, but he's not the only voice in the room. And so, you know, if he says, oh, maybe do cast this person or fire that person, but he's not the final say. And he's one of, you know, several people who have that kind of input. And he still is in all the calls while production's happening. And he can voice his opinion. And he looks at the article or not the articles, the episodes right before they're done. But he's not really in the day to day like he was when the show started when he was still working at Bravo. I wish Andy would invite you on his show. That would be no amazing. No kidding. Yeah, that's not going to happen. They're not really happy with me because Bravo wants to be able to control whatever message is going out there in the world. And I wouldn't give them the opportunity to control my message. So okay. they don't want to have me on. All right. Well, I'm glad we're okay. having you on. Okay. So Anne, yeah. answer I, us this because I we had several people ask it. Who pays for the trips? Oh, it's mostly... Well, Bravo pays for the trips, but they're getting as much for free as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I dedicate a whole book to this. And, you know, they negotiate with these resorts and say, you know, how many rooms they can have, how many nights are going to be there, what time of day, what activities they're going to do. Some of them have uh, behavior clauses for the women that they can't (laughs) get in physical education there. Some they have curfews or they have to stop filming it midnight so it's all a negotiation and you know they're getting promotion obviously and right. for some of the resorts i talked to they said it's very worth it to be on the shows that they get a lot of interest they get housewives coming back and paying for their vacations and then posting about it on social media which gets them more attention mm-hmm. so it's really uh worth it for these hotels and restaurants and other things that are on the shows. that's yeah. great okay so we have a question i have mm-hmm. another question brian um uh, from a listener wanting to know um, Kelly Ben Simone, who's now currently on Million Dollar Listing in New York. Yeah, was she having a nervous breakdown on Scary Island? I don't know that she was having a nervous breakdown, but I think she was definitely having maybe like a panic attack of okay. some sort. Um, I talked to several people that were working on the show then, and they said that she wasn't on drugs. She wasn't drunk um and that she was really having some sort of psychological episode um while she was there but i you know she seems to have gotten back and recovered so i don't think she had a full like she needs to be hospitalized right but okay i think she definitely needed to take a xanax calm down <laughs> <laughs> i know and you do write about that in the book and also the an unbelievable trip was it were they in venezuela the new york housewives that was another crazy trip oh columbia columbia yeah, with the boat ride from hell yes yes, yes. Yeah. Who, do you, who do you um brian i mean do you get scoops or do you get inside information about like who's Who's on the chopping block, uh, the rumor mill, or is it a lot of it Bravo planting their own stories? Like Ramona's uh, being fired or this or that. Uh, it's usually the women themselves. Okay. I actually had a whole chapter about how the women work with the press and the tabloid press. And um, we had to cut it because there there was too much stuff. But um, but And some of the producers are doing it. I talked to somebody who works at a tabloid that I won't name, okay. but it has been part of several plot points on The Real Housewives. Oh, yeah. And okay. they say they essentially have producers on retainer and they pay them, you know, several hundred dollars a week to call in and say, here's what's happening, here's who's fighting with whom, whatever. So it's usually coming from the women or production rather than Bravo. Bravo is very tight about their message and who's leaking and they don't want anything to get out there. They don't. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So Brian, at the end of the day, you wrote this book. Um, and is it going gangbusters? Are people just loving it? Yeah. It's a New York times bestseller. So that's good um, for you. Great. That's so great. Yeah, so I was very pleased with that. I'm still getting a lot of posts from fans on social media. I'm yep. reading the book on the beach this summer, which is just how it should be enjoyed. So I hope people are really liking it. 
I worked really hard on it. And um, so I hope that you learn a lot and laugh a lot and it just intensifies all of our love for the real house. And it does. And I, and um, we love the book. So just big thumbs up. The and house love your recaps. I mean, I even oh, love, so yes. I even loved, you know, your thing that you, you wrote a couple weeks ago after Ebony Williams, like, I don't know if she got mad at you about your New York recap, but New York has been yeah. kind of grim just because of Hate everything that was going mm-hmm. on. But I mean, I, I really, I think that you you just do a great, great job. And I enjoyed reading Nuclear Mistletoe this morning about the recap for last <laughs> night on Vulture.com. Thank you so much. It was, um, they're always fun to write. And it's great that I get to, you know, spend we, so much time with this thing that I love. We yeah. got to go, Brian. The book is The Housewives, the real story behind The Housewives. 